Hello, my name is Dean L. Hoss, and today I'm going to run through with you the double entry for cash discounts allowed and received, which are entered into the three column cash book. Firstly, we need to understand the meaning of a cash discount allowed and received. A cash discount is only given for prompt or quick payment. Unlike a trade discount, which is given usually for bulk buying or buying in large quantities. A trade discount is taken off immediately from the amount owing on the invoice, so we only enter the final amount that is due, and therefore there is no need to worry about the trade discount in terms of doing the double entry. The cash discount is different. It needs to be entered into the double entry system because it's only going to be taken up if the person pays early. So we would only enter it into the double entry system if it actually happens. And because we don't know whether a buyer or seller is actually going to take advantage of paying early and getting an extra discount, then we have to wait and see. And if it does happen, we put it into our T accounts. Now, the difference between a discount allowed and a cash discount received depends on the business and the supplier. Basically, if we give our customer a discount, then that would be considered to be a discount allowed. Why? Because we're allowing them a discount off the invoice bill if they pay us quickly. If we receive from our suppliers a discount, that is to try and encourage us, the business, to pay early, that would be known as a discount received. So if we look here, we can see that in this example, B King, our debtor, pays us a check, but he or she have already deducted a 5% cash discount allowed from the debt. Why have they deducted that? Well, presumably we gave them an incentive to pay us early, in which case they got an extra 5% off. If they owe us $100, they're not going to send us $100. They're going to send us 100 minus the 5%. And so if we look at that payment of $95, it would come out of B King's account and into our bank account. But unfortunately, if we look here, the original debt of 100 minus the 95 on the credit side would still leave us with a balance carried down or bought down of $5, which clearly is incorrect because now the debt has been settled. So to make both sides equal and to, if you like, kill off this account, we do the double entry for, in this case, the discount allowed. So the $5 that we allowed them as a discount would be credited to the debtor account in your sales ledger and would be debited in your special account discounts allowed in the general ledger. And the discount allowed is then entered as an expense in your profit and loss account or your income statement. For a creditor, the opposite will apply. Here, the discount received will be a revenue. And in this case, again, if we owe a hundred dollars to P. Spiro, our creditor, and um, we take off three percent, which is our discount received, then we're only going to pay that person ninety-seven dollars. We can see here that we've paid him or her in cash, so we would credit the cash and debit P. Spiro's creditor account in the purchases ledger. But again, in the same way with the debtor, the creditor here is going to have a hundred dollars that we owe. Spiro on the credit side, but on the debit side, there is only 97. So to make this a debt account, we need to enter the discount received on the debit side of $3 and then post it to the credit side of our discount received account. Why is it on the credit side? Well, because it's a revenue. And again, it's posted to the profit and loss section of our income statement, and it goes underneath your gross profit as an additional income. In other words, it's a bonus or something extra that we have received. Thanks for listening. If you found this tutorial useful, then please do wait up for the next video to load on the playlist. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you do like what we're doing, also hit the like button.